The extraterrestrial highway, also known as Nevada State Route 375, is a 98 mile long highway located in the state of Nevada. The road gained its nickname due to its close proximity to the mysterious Area 51 military base and the numerous reported sightings of unidentified flying objects, also known as UFOs, in the area. Next stop, Area 51. You may never see us again. <laughs> My dad and I set out to drive this route over one day and here's all the experiences we had on the extraterrestrial highway. Let me know what you think in the comments and let's jump into it. Starting our next road trip along the extraterrestrial highway, we stayed at the Clown Motel in Tonopah last night, which was a very interesting experience and you can see that video up here when we're heading on to breakfast. There are two main hotels in Tonopah, the Clown Motel, which is voted one of the scariest motels in the United States, and the Mizpah Hotel, which is one of the most haunted in the United States. Since we stayed at the Clown Motel, we decided we wanted to go over and explore the Mizpah Hotel and have breakfast before heading out on the drive. Officer's got his space cowboy shirt on for the extraterrestrial highway. Ready to go. While we were waiting for our food to be ready, I decided to go explore the hotel. The fifth floor is supposed to be the most haunted due to the lady in red, a woman who was murdered in the hotel in the 1920s. Very old feeling and the mirrors give it a uh, little bit of a creepy vibe. This building was one of the first on the west coast that had an electric elevator. This is a cool historic hotel but it's definitely a little creepy. 504 is the famous haunted room here. I'm heading back down to get breakfast though. Next time I'm in Tonopah, I'm definitely going to stay here, but it was cool just to walk around. Definitely spend a little bit of time exploring the lobby, which has a bar and it has an old bank safe that you can walk into with lots of memorabilia about the area. That's a pretty simple breakfast, but more, what more do you want? Yeah, it looks great. As we finished breakfast, the Tonopah Historic Mining Park opened right behind the hotel, so we decided to go see that before we headed out on the road. Tonopah is honestly a pretty cool town and I definitely recommend spending a little bit of time here, especially if you're driving the extraterrestrial highway. It's basically the only major town anywhere near the route. Man, this place is just cool. They said that there's over a hundred acres you can explore here with four or five different mines. We're definitely not going to have enough time to see this today. There was a small fee to enter the park and I believe it was $5 when my dad and I went. Honestly, it's well worth it for this cool spot. It's a very cold day for our extraterrestrial road trip. 29. 29, snow on the ground. At least we have a little bit of sun, but there's a storm moving in this afternoon. You guys see this? Pops is actually going inside of the old tunnel. Wow, Pops, I'm proud of you. You're standing over something that he said was a thousand feet down. And look at how they have the logs there to keep it from crushing in. That's nuts. The only thing that's keeping these two rocks from coming together and crushing us are these little wooden memes. <laughs> Very secure. Yeah. This park is really well preserved. If you have the time, plan for a couple hours here so you can really experience it. We explored a few more of the park's buildings and then went over and saw the mining shaft before ending our time here. That is so cool that you can just see the old mining shaft just like that. This is one of the best mining areas I've ever explored. So much cool stuff to see, so much history. I wish I could spend more time here, but we're heading on to the extraterrestrial highway. Be sure to fill up with gas before you start the drive on the ET highway. From Tonopah, it's about 150 miles to the Crystal Springs Alamo area, which is the next spot to get gas. Do not leave Tonopah without getting gas as you definitely will need it. The drive from Tonopah to the start of the ET highway is about 40 minutes. We're at the town of Warm Springs. That's the extraterrestrial highway right there. You can see the sign, but we're gonna head out to the lunar crater first and then come back and go that way. One of the most interesting stops to see near the highway is Lunar Crater National Landmark. 
It's about 45 minutes out of the way, but it was used by NASA to train some of the astronauts that participated in the Apollo missions. Once you make it to the turnoff, it's about 9 miles down a dirt road, which is normally accessible via a two-wheel drive car, but sometimes after bad weather, it may require high clearance in a four-wheel drive car. We came all the way out here. I didn't expect there to be as much snow, but it is very icy and it's nine miles to get to the crater. So I think we're gonna skip it today. But if you come out here, this is probably a pretty cool spot when it's not snowy and icy. I was really hoping to see this, but unfortunately my car was not equipped for the icy drive. Next time. Even without being able to make it to the crater, it's still a pretty awesome time to be out here. There's beautiful snow covered mountains everywhere and we've basically seen no cars which is another good reason not to drive nine miles on the ice without snow tires. I was actually surprised that the reception is decent during many parts of the ET highway but during this section there was definitely no reception. From here we turned around and drove 30 minutes back to the start of the highway. As you can see the views here are incredible especially in the winter. My dad and I were blown away by the vast landscape and the massive mountains. We've made it back to the extraterrestrial highway, so now we can begin our road trip. So this drive is only a couple hours. Shouldn't take you too. Unfortunately, it looks like the aliens got pops. I'm gonna have to do this road trip all by myself. Pops, I've been looking for you. What happened? I don't wanna talk about it. You wanna continue the road trip though? I guess. Can we get a like for Pops' special performance being abducted by aliens? That was pretty strong, right? Academy Award in a short film. I'm looking for that. <laughs> also, you know what's scarier than being abducted by aliens? Surfing the internet without a VPN. In case you've never heard of one, a VPN is essentially software you have on your computer that connects to a private network and encrypts what you do online. I've been using a VPN for years because it protects me when I'm on public Wi-Fi networks while traveling. I never feel safe logging into my website or YouTube on a public Wi-Fi network, so I always connect to my VPN before connecting to any important sites. Of course, there are many other great reasons to use a VPN as well, such as changing your virtual location, accessing different countries' streaming libraries, sending and receiving files, and more. And with Surfshark, you can connect to unlimited devices, which means that you can use it on your phone and your computer with no additional fees. If you're interested in trying Surfshark VPN, you can scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description to get 83% off and 3 months free on a 24 month plan. Back on the road, we continued through a remote area of Nevada until we saw a little lake that was completely frozen over. I'm not really sure what this was, but based on the map, it looks like it might be Twin Springs. Pops, how many skips can you get with your rock? On 20 on the ice? I don't know. I think that was closer to 19. 19. Yeah. This rock is also really cool, right on the other side of the water. This road trip is not like the traditional ones that you see my dad and I on where we stop at 500 places. It's basically remote with only one tiny town on the entire drive. That being said, the area is stunning and the landscape is just stark and beautiful everywhere you look. I pulled off here to look at this mountain, but I also wanted to note that somewhere in that vastness out in front of us is actually the furthest you can be from a McDonald's in the entire United States. Hat tip to the website Atlas Obscura for telling me about that. And it's pretty funny that we're about 135 miles away from a McDonald's right now. Don't pick up hitchhikers. <laughs> Too late. There's all sorts of signs on the road saying that this is an open range and that you may see cattle while you're driving. We saw a lot of cattle while we were driving. Oh, they say this is an open range and it really is. Look how close they are to the freeway. Hey guys. After our wildlife encounter, we reached the town of Rachel, which is not much of a town. It's basically one business. The next stop was the Little Alien, which is a restaurant and a motel right along the route. 
They also have a time capsule outside from the movie Independence Day that's to be opened in 2050. So they don't allow any video in there, which makes sense with the secretiveness of the base and everything. But it was a cool stop. They have burgers there. They were pretty good. There's lots of alien souvenirs and things you can see. Plus the people that were working there were really nice. Friendly folks. Now we're heading on. Driving through the town of Rachel, it appeared there was some type of gas station there, but it didn't look open and I wouldn't trust that they have gas. There's also an extraterrestrial highway sign here if you want to take another photo, but for us, we continued on towards the black mailbox. Here we are at the famous black mailbox where we can write a letter and leave it for the aliens to pick up. It looks like uh, people have left the aliens some Mountain Dew and some other letters. This is of course the highlight. We must carry the torch of the Area 51 stormers. Hashtag never forget. <laughs> Someone else made their own sticker just to put on here. All right, Pops is writing the aliens a letter for us. What are you gonna say, Pops? Dear alien, why are you so hard to see? <laughs> well, you gotta put my name on there too. Uh, and Josh. Josh too. What would you write on your note to the alien? Put it in the comments below. <laughs> How are they supposed to contact you? There's no contact information. <laughs> I'm not asking them to contact me. I, I'd rather them leave me alone. <laughs> You've already been abducted once in this video. You don't want to be abducted again. If you had ever been abducted, you'd want to leave it alone. <laughs> there you go. Delivered to the black mailbox. Next stop, Area 51. You may never see us again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know guys, the aliens might have liked Pop's letter. There's rays of light coming right down on the mailbox. It's pretty cool that this mailbox is just in the middle of nowhere along this drive. It's a fun thing to find on a road trip, but we are heading on to Area 51. We had no idea how close we could get to Area 51, but the people at Little Alien gave us a map and told us that we could go 13 miles down Groom Lake Road in order to get there. I don't know if we went down the wrong road for Area 51. We tried to follow the map, but it says that we will get our car impounded. So I'm guessing that we're not gonna go any further than this. We're guessing that probably that sign meant that if you were going to mess around with Area 51, you were going to get in big trouble. But the way it was worded, it seemed like if we drove past that, we might have to go to jail. So we decided, hey, we didn't need to see the gate of Area 51 that much, but definitely let us know if uh, that's correct in the comments. It ended up being around a 30 minute excursion to drive 13 miles one way and 13 miles back on a dirt road. But yeah, there's Area 51 for you, I guess. From there, it was only about a 20 minute drive to the end of the extraterrestrial highway. I stormed Area 51. They can't stop us all. This was supposed to be our second to last stop, this shop right here, which says it's open, but is not open. It's Sunday at 2.30, which is open till five and it is completely closed. It is a bummer, but I saw people online always saying that it was closed even though it said it was open. Plus, it's just a gift shop, so I wish we could see it, but not this time. Before leaving the research center, be sure to come back here, which has a replica of the signs you can see when you get to Area 51. I guess we would have seen this if we kept going. All right, we got one last stop before we finish this video. As you leave the Alien Research Center, you'll head into the small town of Crystal Springs, which is where the highway ends at Route 93. This is the official last stop of the road trip at ET Fresh Jerky. This is the jerky shop. We'll see if it's open. It does not look open, but maybe we'll get lucky. This shop is pretty awesome as it has a great wall of murals and some spaceships right outside the storefront. This jerky says that it's from Area 51 and the person who was working there jokingly told me that it was from animals that had been abducted by aliens at Area 51. This shop is a lot of fun as it has great jerky you can buy, different memorabilia that you can see, information on Area 51, and of course a wall in the back where you can sign your name. 
We're signing the wall to commemorate our time on the ET highway. Go for it. I know exactly what I'm going to do. This is a really fun beginning or end of your road trip and they actually take pictures of the wall once it fills up and then paint it so that the next group of people can ride on it. That was a good stop. They had a lot of little fun souvenirs plus the people that were working there were really nice and they have some stuff to explore outside as well. Don't forget to see the crashed spaceship which is my favorite part. Thanks so much for going on this adventure with us. Hopefully you had fun driving the extraterrestrial highway. And we will see you on the next video. This is how I got away from the alien. We exceeded the weight limit. Couldn't take me. And you crashed right here? Crashed right here, yeah. Got away. Ha <laughs> ha.